We're called to raise up a what? Can't hear you. Because nothing is truly yours until you understand it. I'm sorry, back in the days, kings went to battle. Now these jokers don't go to battle. They start these wars and they stay in, in, in the White House. Back then, you started a war, you going out first. You got it? So somebody say, I am responsible. I, am responsible. I can't hear you. I am responsible. So we got Jesus. Arch, I need you. You the Holy Spirit. So Jesus tells these disciples, he said, man, I got to go. Ascension day is coming up May 18th. Ascension day is when Jesus went up. This Jesus. Jesus said, I got to go. So he dies on the cross. He goes. Now he's taken out sin, the substitute. So now you have access to total forgiveness of your sins. You can put it all on him. It's called the great substitute. Now, even if you go sin again, you are no longer a sinner. You're what's called the righteousness of God in Christ. He took your sin nature and gave you his righteousness. What's righteousness? When I'm in right standing with the Father. And you can ask the Father anything. What father wouldn't want to bless his kids? Come on. Come on, Eddie. What father, what father wouldn't want to bless his kids? I can't hear you. If, if you got some money, you won't take care of your kids. Am I right? Especially if they're doing what you ask them to do. Am I right? So you and I lacking what we need, whether peace, joy, money, that's a bad reflection on our father. And he don't like that. So he's saying, repent so I can bless your behind. He's saying, repent so I can bless your behind. Because even if my children sin, they're still my children. So I ask somebody, somebody say, well, you know, once saved, always saved. You know, that's not true. So I always ask them the question, what, how many sins does it take before I lose my salvation? Right. <laughs> Isn't that a sensible question? Yes, sir. Yeah. When does my child stop being my child? My sin hinder my relationship with them. It don't take it away. Why am I telling you that? Because too many of you all stand away from God. You won't even talk to him anymore. Because you got in your flesh or you got bound by something or you didn't forgive people. So you end up with lust dealing heavily where you feel like, man, even though after you sin, you, you go whoop de woo and you're feeling all bad. Then you repent, but you, you don't know how to break it. You got, you got, that's called you got back in bondage. And a lot of times that's because people won't forgive people. You got to forgive people from the heart who hurt you. And ain't no wiggle room with this. You, you got to go and get this out your heart and say, Lord, I forgive this person. I'm letting it go. And when it come back again, you say, I've forgiven them. I start praying for them. And if he keeps sending it back to them, I'm going to bless them. Because you can't afford as a believer to have unforgiveness in your heart. If you do, Satan has full access to you. And if, if Willie has unforgiveness in his heart as a believer, as a Christian, listen to me. Somebody look up. I'm not going to be here alone. If Willie has unforgiveness in his heart, he now will be back in bondage even though he's been set free in some area of his life. And Satan now has access to him and him. It's called a tormentor. He said, because that man wouldn't forgive in Matthew chapter 8, he's going to turn him over to a tormentor. What's a tormentor? Somebody that's going to turn you. Come from the word tornado. You're going to turn, but you're going to, Satan going to turn you. Whereas God, the Holy Spirit, wanted to turn you. But because you won't forgive, okay, I'm turning you over to the tormentor. So now, Satan going to turn you. Now, Satan going to be unleashed on you and them. So they'll end up dealing with stuff they don't even know why, why it happened. He'll end up messing with their life because now, because he won't forgive, Satan now has access to him and has access to them. Now, I got a question for you. Is it worth holding on to this stuff? No. And there's no wiggle room. 
You sitting here, I've been teaching on this, this power of forgiveness. You sitting here not forgiving people from the heart. You're wasting your time. The tormentor is on your behind. You and I could be here ushering and looking like everything going well. And man, you, know, you and I done mess around and got back in bondage to something. Even though he's still my child. But now he has access because I won't forgive people even though I've been forgiven. Some of y'all won't forgive your, your ex-wives. Sometimes you won't forgive people who don't understand you, mistreated you. You got to give it, give it. You got to forgive it. You what? You got to. There's no wiggle room, man. There are a lot of people forgiving the head. Why is God saying this to us? Why y'all think he's saying this to us tonight? Because people are dealing with this. And he knows he want to get you free. If I taught, if, if I can just teach you guys and whoever else, young people in here, if I can just teach y'all one thing, how old are you? If I can just teach y'all one thing that'll change your life, one thing, you, if you do nothing else, I say, if you do this one thing, honor father and mother. Honor father and mother. And here's what it said. It's the first commandment or the promise. If you honor your father and mother, life's going to go well. If you don't, it's not. You can pray. You can sit in church. It doesn't matter. Some of us have not honored father and mother. And some of y'all still got your parents and you still disrespect them. He can't ignore it because it's all based on laws and principles. I already know. If I give y'all a mic, if y'all not honoring your mother, I already know how y'all life going. But we praying for you. So God can touch your heart and help you see your mom. Honor her. Take care of stuff in the house. Maybe dad not there, but God has powered you guys. Why? Oh, man. If I can show you, look at me, Willis. If I can show y'all what he got planned for y'all, you'll weep for days. He loves us, man. I'm not preaching no damnation here. All this love. If I just give you, and if it's not your parents, whoever your guardian is, let their words carry weight in your life. It's the first commandment God promised. If you do this, things are going to go well. And if you haven't, repent and get going. It. Is this good? Yes. So let me close this out. Come on. Arch is the Holy Spirit. He's inside of Willie. The Holy Spirit is listening to the Son. They communion. And the Son doing what the Father says. So the Father told the Son, I want Willie. The son talks to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit now goes and makes Willie aware, convict him of sin. Then, now Willie gets saved, Willie walking with God, now he brings a son. Come on. This is Willie's son in love, but I'm using him as a son. So now, second generation. Now, his decision is going to impact his life. Even though God will handle him individually. But if Willie deal with some things and allow the Holy Spirit, where are you going, Holy Spirit? You, you inside of him. You've got to be close. Because you're the key to Willie's freedom. <laughs> you're the key to his freedom. Got it? The reason why the Holy Spirit in him is because he got him forgiven. So now the Holy Spirit can stay. He doesn't leave. That's why the Holy Spirit stays in you. Even you smoking weed, you backslidden, but you're born again. The Holy Spirit there, he's still going to tell you, you know you God's child. You know that don't satisfy you. You know that's just temporary. But if you'll walk, if you'll, you'll repent, I'm getting ready to give you some smoke. You, you won't need to be smoking. Why? The power of the Holy Spirit. Nobody gets you higher than the Holy Spirit. 
feet. Nobody can get you higher because he's going to connect with you because he knows what the Father has for you. And then he wants to build the house and then now, uh, now a son comes. Now he, he's the seed of the righteous. So even if he go wilding out, that power of the Holy Spirit, the angels, going to come for him because of him. Then you got a grandson. Come on. So his desire was to play ball at the highest level. Am I right? But God has something else. He's really a barber evangelist. So now his desire has been fulfilled in his son. He didn't put that in him. He was born with that in him. And just because he a free agent don't mean he not called to be there. Amen. It's all personal. It's never supposed to be about religion. When you leave here, man, quoting all these Bible and all this stuff, it is just simple. You got the son who's at the right hand of the father. Come on, Devin. Here's the father. The son at the right hand of the father. Interceding for him. Talking to the Holy Spirit. This spirit raised Jesus from the dead. So you mean it can't help you? <laughs> you mean this, this spirit that organized the earth can't help you organize your house? This spirit changed a man's heart. You mean you can't change your wife's heart? This spirit helped Jesus through the word of God be victorious. This your friend. This your helper. You got to talk to him. Why? He's a person. And he seems to, carry the, he seems to have characteristics similar to a woman. Because he's sensitive. He's the only one of the Trinity. And don't get mixed up. I don't see Trinity in the Bible. Be quiet. It just simply means three distinctive beings, but they all operate as one. Nobody's independent. He won't do nothing that he doesn't tell him. That's why you're here. Because the Holy Spirit through that man. I don't know if Brother Green here. That's why Devon and, and uh, Paul, I think Paul out of town. Where you at? Dev where's Devon? That's why you here. Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's why you here. Holy Spirit. Too many are playing the, playing the game off their natural. This dude in you. You know one of the things he does? If you'll study film, he'll bring things back to your remembrance. He'll tell you plays are coming. I got over 60 interceptions. Most of them I knew the ball was coming because of him. So now you want to get to know him, Art. When you're watching film, say, Holy Spirit, help me. See what's on here. I knew here in the Ella, this is the first time I'm saying this publicly. This is a receiver. I knew every time he put his left foot up, he was running a comeback route. I still won't tell him I know it to this day, even though I'm retired. <laughs> Too many believers trying to live without him. He's your key. He's your helper. No matter, you got a business, you're an employee, you're running a church, you're a member, you're a kid in high school, right here. He's never sad. He'll never hate on you. He'll never condemn you. But he can be grieved. He won't leave you, but you can grieve him. 